Mr. Havdanesh here, and we'll be presenting on Don't Ask Your Developer. So, Dinesh, over to you. All right, excellent. Uh, yeah, uh, morning. I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Bay Area in San Francisco right now, and uh, uh, welcome to all of you for the TED Summit 2022. As Alan mentioned, um, we have been actually been with TED Summit from day one. I think from Bangkok. I think Alan, we started, and then we actually it's been a it's been a great uh, journey all this time. So just to give you a quick background of myself, I am actually the founder CEO of Senate Mobile, uh, mostly focusing on messaging platforms, uh, CPaaS, uh, um, uh, doing quite a lot of things in the AI ML area. Today we are going to talk about don't as your developer. So just, uh, you can see my screen, right, Alan? Yep. All right. Yeah, so coming back, um, I think we are in a very, very interesting time frame right now. I think um, if you really look at what happened with the, uh, uh, from the Industrial Revolution 3.0 to uh, 4.0, we are jumping into an area of what we call a complete digital transformation. I think all of you, I think we all realized that I think it actually accelerated with the pandemic. And um, this is like actually going from a butterfly, from a, uh, going from a cocoon to a, a chrysalis into a butterfly, that whole journey. And that journey can take you know, to become a butterfly, it could be, seven to 14 days or it could be even three to four months if the environment is not suited for it to kind of come out as a butterfly so i think that's the phase that we are in currently and as telcos i feel that you know there is definitely a opportunity now uh, with what happened with the pandemic and with you know the the complete change to be able to take advantage of your assets to be brought up and opening the assets, you know, previously from service delivery platforms to making into CPaaS. Now we see that it's actually moving and converging with enterprises and payments and bringing those out as uh, uh, tools for enterprises to be able to build uh, applications on that. So we call this APIs for everyone. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, you are now able, you don't need to be a, a developer to be able to build products and bring to market. So I think this is going to be the key revolution we see that will happen in the next uh, decade. I think I'll go back to it, you know, see what the business opportunity is. But if you really look at um, this had kind of an accelerator during the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic that we all went through. So what happens? The, the, the global API market it's going to be close to a billion dollars and it's been growing at a CAGA of 23% um, year over year. And um, we uh, from a telco and the career industries are, are here to kind of uh, be able to take this and build on what we have and create that as tool set for enterprises to be able to bring this to uh, their own customers to be bring this out as a uh, platform for that. So what happened during the thing, you know, so all companies started uh, doing this because uh, during the pandemic time, whether it's marketing updates, reminders, uh, change updates, virtual assistance, OTPs, all that really kind of uh, accelerated during the, uh, again, during the pandemic time. And if you, you know, because of the scarcity of resources, a lot of enterprises started to be able to do this through uh, building their own internal systems. And we saw that, you know, especially in Asia, in the Asian market, that enterprises were had no choices but actually to be able to kind of do this. And um, telecom operators or the couriers had the experience of kind of uh, bringing this tool set to market and allowing this to happen. So if you really look at the APAC um, telco market it has an ideal opportunity because we see this as a real growth in, in time to come. And part of this is that we are seeing that enterprises are 
merging the ecosystems are getting built now they are opening the apis the telco apis on one side enterprise apis then you have the payment apis that are coming in whether it's kind of a connecting into the payment gateways and opening that up whether it's wallets that are getting opened up and all once we have this ecosystem getting built enterprises that had to go to your developers and ask um, to develop things now they can do through their own business units so we saw that happening in philippines in singapore in sri lanka we saw a lot of these enterprises building this and bringing that to market so this is where we see that the the huge growth that we are thinking will will come up will actually come up uh, through the um, telcos bring bringing uh, or the couriers bringing this up and the key again is simplicity right simplicity is you know being able to uh, early I, i'll take you through a video of how it was you know a few years back and how it has changed even to that so telcos being able to open their apis mesh it with some of the enterprise apis and then bring some of the payment apis be able to kind of a go to market in a very timely manner if you really look at if uh, if we need to kind of a build a application that needs um, instant um, information that is needed whether it's a fmcg or uh, whether it's a financial institute the time it takes from an idea to come out it used to be you know six to nine months now they want to try this out in a control environment you can actually try something out within weeks if that is working well then you scale up and you you do the complete rollout so we saw um, both fmcg companies as well as financial institutions trying this in a control environment and bringing this out to the market so we feel that that's one of the key areas in that so this is for careers this is a billion dollar opportunity uh it's it's why we call it a billion dollar opportunity a new revenue opportunity is that now you have the ability i think it got accelerated the digital transformation got accelerated through the pandemic and now you are actually being able to bring this to the um, enterprise market you know even smbs now you know i mean earlier used to have armies of developers with the uh, large enterprises but now you can actually bring this to the msmes or SMEs to be, bring these solutions to market very, very far. So what were some of the challenges with the last? I mean, we, we all know this, right? I mean, the coding skills were needed. Market, you know, keeping the right first to enter market was an advantage, but you couldn't do it because it was taking so long to do that. Lengthy and development cycles, you know, with current, you know, CICD and some of the DevOps operations now actually through your low code, no code, you can actually go to market even faster in that. And there was a lot of high dependency with the IT teams. So those, you know, uh, were, were some of the barriers for that, but helping the, the real success to, for a, a formula for success is that building this non-developers to create and deploy services to increase innovative capabilities or services that can be brought to market as fast as possible so that's what we saw and this is how the the no code low code technology started coming in according to gardner you know it had been growing at uh, you know, 23 percent during the pandemic and i think it it's not a secret for all of us right i mean we did not have um, time to kind of uh, sit down and do lengthy uh, discussions you know you know something needed to be done it was done two-factor authentications came overnight you know we saw zoom uh, google meets and others became overnight and with that you know there are certain other solutions started being coming into market and that was done in a rapid speed that we never saw it in the previous uh, decade right with, with, with that so you know let me take you what a uh, CPAS, you know, this is something that we have been doing and we have seen this. We used to have a CPAS, this used to be something like this, very, very much of a text-based driven. You actually used to do this, you create this and you test it out, you take that. But now it has moved from that text-based into completely a visual application. So how does that work? It works, you know, very much on a visual way. You actually drag and drop, you test it out, 
and within no time actually you can get the applications launched so we saw that you know visual application builders in the uh, no code low code really kind of uh, increase the productivity of the uh, units the departments that were able to kind of uh, uh, bring bring up uh, uh, both telco and enterprise applications to market much faster so the key I, i'm going to use a couple of things i think you know the, allow telcos to identify full potential of their current telco assets that's what they were doing before now they can actually start um, not only to monetize them but also merge or to mesh them with some of the payment apis payment wallets and also with en enterprise applications enable more convergence between communications we have seen all these things uh, to increase all that i think we all know this and the less dependency with it teams were some of the things that we were hearing from over and over and over from the enterprise customers that we are working in the um, in the asian market so what we uh, did was we actually went a step ahead you know further in this actually and use some of the new areas that we felt that was that we could leverage for on the cpas platform so what we did was we actually brought in customizable templates and we also brought a, a smart chatbots can actually that can be trained and learned and you don't need to have a, a significant uh, experience in kind of uh, uh, building this because the you know, the back end started kind of uh, being able to do that so the what we did was we have a certain set of templates that can be used very quickly they can actually uh, not only visually drag and drop but also they are, that if you need to kind of build some of the uh, regular routine stuff these templates were able to do that in, in a, a shorter short shorter period on that then we also saw the smart chat box that are coming in and these were completely uh, uh, supported trained by the uh, you know the, the operators were able to kind of launch this but they also gave access to that for uh, developers to enhance it in one way and then bring it out for enterprises in a faster manner so those were some of the things that we saw and we see that actually it's accelerating even on that so we believe that sim uh, the simplicity that empowers non-developers will really create an ecosystem that will actually grow in the future so um, i would like to kind of maybe uh, we see that unleashing of the powers for the careers uh, for the tel for the telcos actually will start with uh, bringing the next generation cpas platform that has uh, not only the telco assets but also enterprises and some of the payments being built in and that's where we see the next um, wave of growth that uh, unleashing that power of uh, uh, being able to be a billion dollar industry for the telcos for in, in the Asian region is very much we have you know if you need further information you can go to the senatemobile.com uh, site and we have a white paper we, we go into a little bit of more detail about it you know how I, and, and uh, talk about this so you can just download that and uh, if there's any questions I'll be willing to answer that right